This lecture consists of three chapters. One, educational videos, what's that? Two, smart and simple tools, tools that you already have. Three, three principles for design and production of educational videos. Educational videos, what's that? Anyone? It could be a lot of different things, of course. And here is just an example of um, different uh, concepts you can use. You have documentary, talks and discussions, tutorials, VR and 360 video, interview, recorded classroom lectures, like this. I'm actually recording myself now with my smartphone. And I have um, my hands free as a microphone here with a paper clip. Works pretty good. Lab instructions, screen capture and drawings, stop motion. And it could look uh, like this. Yeah, that was just a teaser of uh, different kind of media concepts that I've been working with. Let's move on to chapter number two, this lecture. Smart and simple tools, tools that you already have. Handheld devices like smartphones or iPads uh, and so on, and an ordinary laptop with a screen recording and video editing app is more or less all you need to produce um, educational videos of high quality. Of course, you, you can also um, add a couple of things to your toolbox. For example, video recording apps you can uh, download for your um, smartphones that make your video camera even smarter. So you can have more control of the exposure and, and the focus and the audio and so on. I'm recording right now with this iPhone and I use an app called Movi Pro. Uh, sound is really important. and. It actually works with, with the hands, hands free if you, you have this microphone part pretty close to your mouth. I've done it several times. But of course, it's a little bit messy with this paper clip and so on. And um, therefore, you can um, order this professional microphone that makes the sound quality uh, slightly better. But for me, it's, it's so nice to have this, this clip instead of the paper clip. <laughs> so that's basically why I, I bought it. And uh, streaming is really important to have a decent streaming solution and, and luckily we have that at KTH. We call it KTH Play in Kaltura. Uh, all of us have an account there and I really encourage you to use that uh, when you're um, uploading videos. All right, we have reached um, number three in this presentation um, and it's three principles for design and production of educational videos. The first principle is about presentation design. Uh, the second one is about sound quality. And the third one is about video editing. Content is king is a common expression, and it might be true, but from a digital learning perspective, content must first be adapted, designed, produced, and presented properly to become a real king. One of the keys to digital quality in educational videos um, is to plan and design and adapt to what's suitable for a video format. For example, shorter and more personal PowerPoint presentations designed for 6 to 10 minutes video blocks, a 69 uh, slide layout, like standard for TV screens nowadays and, and smartphones and computer screens more pictures, video clips, and animations. And take advantage of those digital tools that is available out there. Principle number two is about uh, sound quality. A video without decent sound quality is like reading a book with blurred text. Uh, yes, the sound quality is really crucial for educational videos. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but if the students can't hear what you are saying, 
hmm, they will most likely disappear as fast as a Swedish summer, I would say. Uh, especially if it's not texted. Did you know that uh, about 1.5 million people in Sweden has difficulties to hear? Yeah, it's highly recommended to text videos, if possible. Don't use the internal mics, whatever you do, on smartphones or computers. That quality is not good enough. And therefore, I recommend to use a hands-free uh, with a length cord. All right, um, principle number three. Video editing. A video editing app is for digital learning. What PowerPoint has been for classroom education? Yeah, that's how it is. In this time we are living in now, uh, with this digital uh, transformation, we need new tools. That's nothing strange with that. Trying to produce a video without a decent video editing app is like create a PowerPoint in a text editor. The video edit app Camtasia, it's not harder to learn than PowerPoint. I suggest you just cut your old PowerPoint into pieces digitally and um, create an engaging digital collage instead in the video edit. You can see your PowerPoint more like a sketch or a placeholder that you continue to work it with in the video edit app. Yeah, I think you will need an, an app that allows great flexibility in changing and updating recorded content at any time. And one of the most important features in video edits is the ability to import and work with various kinds of media in several tracks or layers. You might realize that, oh, the text is wrong. Um, the picture is copyright protected. So what to do? Shall I re screen record it again? I'm happy with my voice. No, you just stay in the video edit app and you, you crop away stuff that you don't want and uh, you just add new stuff in the video edit like text blocks, new text and, and so on. It's all about presenting information and media in an engaging way at the right time. What's also great with this app Camtasia is that it has both screen recording and video editing features. So when you have made a screen recording it will show up here in, in the media bin uh, straight away. And then you can improve on the slides with, um, with new kind of uh, material. And use drag and drop effects like zooming in on, on uh, details. Let's say you have a graph and you're talking uh, on a, uh, about a specific part of that graph. And uh, then it's so easy to just drag an effect from, from the effect window onto the track and then you just decide uh, uh, how much it will zoom in. That means that you can see your PowerPoint more like a sketch and a placeholder. So this is absolutely not only for eye candy. This is a pedagogical tool. So, do you think all this uh, presentation design and video production will take some time from you? Of course it will. But it doesn't have to take more time than you usually spend on creating a PowerPoint for your ordinary classroom lectures. I think you really must see this with the making of educational videos as a separate thing and not as something you will get as a bonus uh, while giving an ordinary lecture. I would like to end this presentation with some thoughts about the teacher as a producer. Some teachers uh, might be fine producing on their own with some minor coaching. However, we also need to have a plan for those teachers that of different kind of reasons have difficulties to produce their own digital material. I think we need to establish a new production culture, a culture where teachers can get help from students, teacher assistants, administrators, and so on. Why not call it DLT, digital learning teams? Let's work together on this for sustainable digital learning of high quality. Thanks for listening.